I know that I'm not supposed to be speaking to you from Oslo, Norway. I'm supposed to be in London right now with you, uh, shaking your hands, giving you hugs, ministering to you and laying hands on you and just having a wonderful time in the Lord. Unfortunately, it has not happened to be so today and I'll be coming to explain uh, what has happened and how we still remain confident that God is going to work a work in our lives together today. Allow me to recognize pastors Nick and Mulenga Chanda, who have been my hosts and uh, who invited me to, to London to speak at this ZOCF relaunch and also to preach in their wonderful church uh, tomorrow. I recognize you and I thank you for the great work you are doing for the kingdom of God. Allow me to recognize the leadership and the trustees of ZOCF. Allow me to recognize the representatives of the Zambia High Commission uh, from, you know, in London that are present in the meeting, my fellow Zambians, brothers and sisters. I know that I have so many sons and daughters in the Lord that I was looking forward to meeting today, uh, even blood sons and daughters that I was looking forward to spending time with. But we do apologize that we did everything in our power to ensure that we got all our documentation, in this case, the visas in place. Uh, unfortunately, we could not get the UK visa in Zambia because, as you are aware, we have to send our passports either to Kenya or South Africa to do that. And we only managed to get the Schengen visa uh, to allow us to come to Norway, where we've had wonderful, wonderful meetings. God has done tremendous things here. But we didn't have enough time to send our passports uh, again to Kenya or to South Africa for the UK, uh, but our government, and we are grateful to the Minister of Foreign Affairs that continued to push on our behalf to ensure that we got speedy attention once we arrived in Oslo. Unfortunately, um, we were expecting to have the passports back from this, uh, Dusseldorf, uh, Germany, where they are sent uh, on behalf, you know, for the UK. Uh, they were supposed to come yesterday, Friday and the passports did not show up and uh, DHL says they can only make them available to us on Monday. So as you can see it is something beyond our control but uh, there are no accidents with God and God is never you know, in a court by accident so we know that he is up to something and once again I, we seek your indulgence and your forgiveness for not being with you today um, I, I really, really looked forward to this. We've been planning for this. I'm all pumped, wanting to minister to you and share these wonderful moments. Again, we have committed ourselves uh, to work with Pastor Chanda uh, to come back, to come uh, officially within the next maybe month or two. And um, for this thing, we're going to have something much bigger when we uh, organize that meeting. So I want to put my word out there that I will be coming to London and uh, I hope that we could use this time to sensitize people uh, to be present for that occasion and all of you will be informed in the meantime. Now allow me to just read a scripture that I will leave with you. I know that uh, my own son David is preaching later on today and uh, he is equal to the task. I had a discussion with him late last night, and uh, there's no need for us to doubt that God is going to use him today. He's got a proven ministry, anointed gentleman, and I'm very proud of him, my own son in the Lord. And I'm sure that he's going to fit those shoes without any, any problem. But allow me to leave this scripture with you um, uh, from Daniel chapter 3, verse 16, uh, down to 18. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, 
nor worship the golden image which you have set up. I have received a burden from the Lord to be precise uh, for three months now, three months ago, where the Lord has laid a burden on my heart to start to prepare leadership, especially in my country and on my continent, and obviously this affects everyone uh, in our generation, to prepare a new season in the body of Christ or in the global uh, configuration. In other words, the season that lies ahead of us is going to be a challenging season in which us as individual Christians must count the cost for the first time of being a Christian. There must be something about our faith that roots us in the word of God and in the fact that whatever the cost, we still are going to stand. So I appeal to every individual that calls himself a Christian. We are living during a time when we are a celebrated lot. Preachers have become superstars. We are celebrated. We have tea, coffee, meals with presidents and kings. Uh, we are clapped on and people almost worship us. It's a season that we had. But that season is fading away. There's another season coming. It's a season of paying the price for calling yourself a Christian. And it is to this new generation that the Lord has called me in the next number of months Next month, we're having a, a, an international leadership summit in Kitwe, where we have brought together a thousand young men and women, ministers of the gospel from all denominations, to start to prepare them for this new season that is going to be a demanding and, you know, threatening season for the body of Christ. So we are needing to use this faith that I'm talking about to, to have courage to defy the humanistic spirit that is going to start to be spread uh, around the world. Now, before I talk about Daniel, uh, I just want to mention that we are living during a time when there's a demand for global uniformity. Here I mean the global uh, movement wants a system that is uniform from the North Pole to the South Pole, from the East to the West. And this is a, a, a uniform money system, a uniform global money system. And the IMF and the World Bank are the architects of this to make sure that every country complies with these rules of this money movement and the system. And then secondly, it's the government system that is going to be unified to become a uniform way of doing gov government, which sounds all good, but I'll talk about it in a few minutes. And democracy is one that has been chosen, and we exercise that in my own country, Zambia, but with different variations around the world, but there's a court uniformity. And the last one uh, is moral, uh, a moral uniformity, moral system globally, which put, you know, pushes for a genderless society. And it's this which is my main concern to the body of Christ, because it represents the statue that Babylon and King Nebuchadnezzar put up and placed a demand that everybody within the boundaries of his kingdom needed to bow before this statue. And now it's not just a statue, it is a god of Babylon. Now the children of Israel obviously had a problem with that, because they're a monoistic uh, nation. They only worship one God. They don't bow before any other God. And we noticed that they were in a very difficult situation. The scripture that I read, it was a conversation between the three Hebrew children and King Nebuchadnezzar, who really loved them and was pleading with them to just bow their knee to this statue and their lives will be saved. You know the answer. They said, no, we are not able to do that because we only bow before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Now, that was a problem because the law of the land had a punishment for that. You go into the fiery furnace if you don't do that. And we noticed that three Hebrew children were bold enough to say that, O oh, king, God shall deliver us from that fire. But they went further to say, even if he does not deliver us, we shall not bow before this um, statue. Now, this is the new Christian that we are talking about that is about to come. Because if we look, for instance, on the moral system that is being pushed, a genderless world where, you know, we see how God dealt with the, um, an attempt 
to deal with this gender problem uh, in Sodom and Gomorrah. He came heavy on them and burned the cities down as punishment. But can you imagine preachers now wanting to preach against this movement that is so strong, you know, financed by billions of dollars, and it's being thrown into our faces. In some of the churches, it is being made official that, you know, you can, you know, have same-sex marriage being done in churches, and any pastor who refuses to do that could actually face jail. Now, it is at that time that we have to face this statue and decide whether we shall bow or not bow. And those who shall not bow will either go to jail or something worse could happen to them. And this is not very far from now. It is this generation that is going to face these challenges that I'm, I'm called to in these last days. And I think it's one of the challenges God has given to me. I continue to be actively involved in the political process, and I'll continue to pursue what God has called me there. But this coming month, I'll dedicate it in trying to bring this awareness. And this is what I wanted to bring uh, to you during this time. But let me conclude by saying that Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 actually concludes my thought. And I would like just to read it in conclusion so that I do not preach about it. I will just read it and leave it with you and listen to what the Bible says, starting from verse 10, chapter 6, the book of Ephesians. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, here Paul talks about what I'm talking about from Daniel, that there's a statute before you, a statue before you, and you say no to it. Therefore, in order to say no, be strong in the Lord, because if you're not strong, you're going to bow. Put on the whole armor of God, the word of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Here I'm talking about governmental powers that are going to legislate in their systems of government and in their parliaments that these immoral things must be respected by everybody, including the church. And anybody who defies it, you know, faces a fiery furnace. In this case, whatever the government will meet out for you. But the Bible tells us in Ephesians, Put on the whole armor of God so that you can withstand the wiles of the devil. And these are the things I'm talking about. May your faith be anchored in the Lord. May you be firm in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because time is upon us when our faith shall be put to test. And I know that with God on your side, victory is gar guaranteed. I love you. I really wanted to be with you. But God is with you, and you are going to have a wonderful time in the presence of God. God bless you. I love you. Shalom.